Hey everyone, it's Professor Pemberton. In this video, we're going to talk about circles and equations of circles. So in this video, we're going to talk about what is the standard form for the equation of a circle and how to graph a circle. How do you know what the center and the radius is of a circle when you have the equation of a circle that's written in standard form? And then we're also going to talk about how to convert a circle's e equation from standard form into general form. All right, circles. The goal that we're going to have for this video is we're going to be able to translate a circle's geometric definition into an algebraic equation. So how do you know whether you have an equation that represents the graph of a circle or not? We're going to be able to start with the definition of a circle. The circle is a set of points that's in the rectangular coordinate system or plane that are all equal distant or the same distance from a fixed point called the center. So you have the center of the circle that's not actually part of the circle. All the points that are equal distant from the center are part of the circle. So this fixed distance from the circle center to any point that's on the circle is called the radius. And that's usually represented with a lowercase r. So if we place a circle in the rectangular coordinate system, we label the center as the ordered pair h comma k. And again, h comma k is not part of the circle. Okay, it's just the center of the circle and the radius is going to be represented with the lowercase r, then we can actually choose any point x comma y that's on the circle. So we're going to derive the algebraic equation for the circle. All right, so what we were just saying is that we have a circle that's in the rectangular coordinate system. You have a center of the circle that's not part of the circle, but it's represented as h comma k. This is called the center of the circle. And then all the points that are part of the circle are equal distant from this center. And the distance from the center to any point that's on the circle is called the radius. So you have the center of the circle. And this is always represented as an h comma k for convenience. And then you have this distance from the center to any point on the circle and that's called the radius of the circle and it's represented as a lowercase r and the radius is always a positive number now what we're going to do is choose any point x comma y that's on the circle And we're going to take what we learned in the previous video and be able to derive what the algebraic equation for a circle looks like. So if we take this point x comma y, we know that any point x comma y that we choose, so if we choose any point on this circle, the distance will always be equal to r. So let's use the distance formula. So the distance formula would be you choose any two points and you calculate the distance. So we're going to choose the center as one of the points and the other point will be x comma y. x1, y1 will be the center of the circle, h comma k, and then you also have x2, y2, which is any point on the circle, which we're calling x comma y. And we're gonna use the distance formula. Using the points, h comma k and x comma y. So if you plug those into the distance formula, you have the distance is equal to the positive square root or the principal square root, x2 minus x1. That would be x minus h in parentheses, all squared, plus y2 minus y1. Well, y2 minus y1 is y minus k, and that's all squared, and it equals well, the distance that the center to any point on the circle is the radius. So the distance formula actually is equal to the radius of this circle. So where does the equation come from for the equation of a circle? Well, take this equation that we just derived using the distance formula, square both sides of the equation. So you square the left side and you square the right side of the equation. When you do that, you'll have r squared on one side of the equation and the other side of the equation, if you square the square root, they'll cancel each other out. So you'll have x minus h in parentheses squared plus y minus k in parentheses squared left over. 
and that's the equation of a circle. So this is what's called the standard form of the equation of a circle. So the standard form of the equation of a circle, you need to know what the center of the circle is. So the center of the circle is h comma k, just like we were describing before. And you also must know the radius of the circle because we need to know what r was, the distance from the center to any point on the circle. So if you know the center is h comma k and you know the radius is r, the equation in standard form for a circle is x minus h all squared plus y minus k all squared equals the radius squared. So notice this just like the distance formula, but you squared the left side of the equation and you squared the right side of the equation and that's what you're left over with. So this is very important. If you have an equation of this form, it always will be a circle where the center is h comma k and the radius is r. Now, one very special type of circle that we can actually talk about right away is called the unit circle. The unit circle is where you have the center of the circle is at the origin, 0 comma 0, and it's where the radius is 1, 1 unit. So if you plug in the center as 0 comma 0 into this standard form for the equation of a circle, you'll get x minus 0 all squared plus y minus k, well k is also 0, so y minus 0 all squared equals, and the radius of a unit circle is 1, so you have 1 squared. So when you simplify this, you'll have x squared plus y squared equals 1. This is the equation of a circle with radius of 1, and the center of the circle is 0 comma 0, or the origin. All right, let's talk about example 4. We're going to find out what the standard form for the equation of a circle is if we know the center and we know its radius. So write the standard form of the equation of a circle with center negative 3 comma 6 and the radius is 5. So let's start out by what we want the answer to look like. We want the answer to be in standard form for the equation of a circle. And so standard form for the equation of a circle is x minus h in parentheses all squared plus y minus k in parentheses all squared equals radius squared, r squared. So that means we need to know what the radius is and we need to know what the center of the circle is. The center of the circle is h comma k. They're telling us the center is at negative 3 comma 6. And the radius of the circle we need to know as well. And the radius is given to us in the problem as 5. So r equals 5. So now all we need to do is substitute in these values into the standard form for the equation of a circle. So x minus h, h is negative 3, so you have x minus negative 3, all squared, plus y minus k, k is 6, the y coordinate of the center, and that's all squared, equals, now it's not just 5, it's radius squared, so 5 squared on the right side of the equation. And now if you simplify, the signs, you have x minus negative 3, that's really x plus 3 all squared, plus y minus 6 all squared equals, and 5 squared is 25. And so that is the standard form for the equation of this circle. The center will be at negative 3 comma 6, and the radius is 5. So do not simplify any further. Okay, the reason why you don't want to simplify is this equation is in the special type called standard form, so you can identify what the center and the radius is very quickly. So you can figure out just by looking at this equation, the center is at negative 3 and positive 6, because that's what you would need to have x minus negative 3 to get x plus 3, and y minus 6 would give you the y minus 6. And the right side of the equation is something squared. It's 5 squared, so the radius would be 5. All right, let's try example five now. We're going to go in the reverse order this time. This time they tell us what the equation is for the circle in standard form, and they're asking us to determine the center and the radius of the circle whose equation in standard form is given by this equation. X plus three in parentheses squared plus in parentheses y minus seven all squared equals five. So again, we want 
the equation in standard form so we can figure out what the center and the radius are from the equation. So standard form for equation of a circle It's x minus h in parentheses squared plus y minus k in parentheses squared equals radius squared. And so now let's compare this with the equation that we're given. The equation is x plus 3 all squared plus y minus 7 all squared equals 5. Not 5 squared, just 5. So let's rewrite this so we can figure out what the center and the radius are. So you can rewrite this as x plus 3 squared plus y minus 7 all squared equals what's the number squared that will give you 5? It has to be the square root of 5. Square root of 5 squared will give you the square root and the square will cancel each other out and you'll just be left with 5. So it looks like the number that's being squared is square root of 5. So that's the radius. The radius is root 5 but we still don't know what the center of the radius or center of the circle is. So we still need to rewrite this a bit. So notice that the equation of a circle in standard form will always be x minus a number, that's the x coordinate of the center, and it's y minus the y coordinate of the center of the circle. So let's rewrite this. You need to subtract some number to get 3. Well, we saw this in the last example. You need to subtract negative 3 to get positive 3, and then that's all squared plus, and the other one is already being subtracted. You subtract 7 and that's all squared equals the square root of 5 all squared. And so now we can figure out the center and the radius. The center of the circle is h comma k. That looks like negative 3 is the x-coordinate because I'm subtracting negative 3 and the y-coordinate is 7 because I'm subtracting 7. So negative 3 comma 7 is the center of the circle, so all the points will be equal distant from this point, negative 3, comma 7, and then the radius. So we talked about this one just a minute ago. You have square root of 5, because square root of 5 squared gives you the 5 that was on the right side of the equation. So square root of 5. So all the points will be equal distant, and that distance is the square root of 5 units away from the center. All right, the last thing we're going to talk about in this video is what's called general form for the equation of a circle. So let's say you actually took the last equation, which was x plus 3 all squared plus y minus 7 all squared equals 5. So that was the equation that we were given in standard form in the previous example. Let's say you actually took x plus 3 and you simplified it, or x plus 3 squared, and you simplified it. You have x plus 3 times x plus 3, because you have this, it's x plus 3 all squared. And let's say you multiply out y minus 7 all squared as well. So you'll have y minus 7 times y minus 7. So when you do that, x plus 3 times x plus 3, that gives you x squared plus 6x plus 9 when you FOIL. And y minus 7 all squared, if you simplify that using FOIL, you'll have y, there's a square missing, y squared minus 14y plus 49 equals 5. So when you simplify standard form by using the FOIL method to simplify and square each of the parentheses involving x and the parentheses involving y, you get this equation, x squared plus y squared plus 6x minus 14y, and then the 9 plus 49 gives you 58 equals 5. So let's say you have all the variable terms on one side of the equation and you have all the constant terms or the non-variable terms also on the same side of the equation. So that one side of the equation is just zero. Well, if you have x squared plus y squared plus 16x minus 14y, if you subtract the five over to the left side of the equation, you'll get 58 subtract five at 53 and the right side of the equation is now zero. This type of equation for a circle is what's called general form. So when you have an equation of this form, 1x squared plus 1y squared plus some number times x, in this case it was a 6, plus some number times y, in this case it was negative 14, plus just some number, a constant term, and the equation must be equal to 0, 
An equation of a circle in this form is called general form. So if you simplify standard form, you will get general form by using the FOIL method and collecting like terms. So the definition of general form is the general form of the equation of a circle will be of this form, x squared plus y squared plus some number times x, some number times y, plus a constant term, and the equation must be equal to zero. D, E, and F are just real numbers. If you convert from standard form to get general form, you just use the FOIL method. Okay, you, you have to multiply x plus 3 squared and y minus 7 squared out like we did in the previous example. How do you go from general form to standard form? It's a little bit more work. Okay, you can't just look at this equation and say, okay, that's my radius and that's my center because it's not in standard form. Standard form, we can figure out h and k from the center and we can figure out the radius r by just looking at the equation. We can't do that with general form. So to go from general form to standard form, you have to do what's called completing the square. And we've done this before. So let's try that with example six. Convert the general form of the circle's equation to standard form. The reason why we want to do this is because we want to be able to graph the circle or we want to figure out the center and the radius. So write the standard form of the equation of a circle given its equation in general form and it's x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y subtract 23 equals 0. So I can't say the radius is this number or the center is this number, this ordered pair. I can't say it. I just this equation because it's not in standard form. So let's take this equation, x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y subtract 23 equals 0. And like I said, this is called general form for equation of a circle. We need to complete the square to be able to get standard form from general form. So complete the square with the x-coordinate first. And then also complete the y, complete the square with the y-coordinate. So let's do this for the x-coordinate first. So take all the terms that are involving x and group them together. So you have x squared and a 4x. Group those two terms together. Plus, now group the y terms together. So you have a y squared and you have a subtract 6y. So group those together. And then you have subtract 23, that's not part of the x coordinate or the x, x terms or the y terms, so just keep it separate and the equation is still equal to zero. So all we've done was take the x's and group them together, take the y terms and group them together. So we just took the general form and just grouped them by the x's grouped together and the y terms grouped together. So now here's complete the square. We need to add a number with the x terms so we get something squared. We get an equation that looks like this. We get x plus or a minus a number, but it's all squared. And that's why complete the square works. So let's figure out what number we need to add with x squared plus 4x so it becomes a perfect square. So remember how this works. You take the number in front of the x term. That's the b. So it's 4. You divide b by 2. So b divided by 2 is 2. So 4 divided by 2 gives you 2, and then now you square 2. So b divided by 2, so you take this number and you square it. So you take 2 and you square and you get 4. So that means I need to add 4 inside the parentheses with the x squared plus 4x becomes a perfect square. Do the same thing with the y terms. So this time the b is negative 6. The number in front of the y term, you divide it by 2, so negative 6 divided by 2 is negative 3, and now take negative 3 and you square it. 
So remember, the negative 3 it needs to go into parentheses before you square. So b divided by 2 squared is negative 3 in parentheses squared. Negative 3 times negative 3 is positive 9. So I need to add 9 inside the parentheses with y squared minus 6y so that it becomes a perfect square. All right, so all this was warm-up work because we need to actually take all this idea and actually put it together now. So add 4 and 9 inside the parentheses. So we're going to add 4 inside the parentheses with the x's. We're going to add 9 inside the parentheses with the y's. So you'll have x squared plus 4x plus 4, because that's what we got when we complete the square with the x term, plus y squared, subtract 6y, and we need to add 9 inside the parentheses with the y, so it becomes a perfect square. Subtract 23 equals 0. Now, here's the thing. We just added 4 to the left side of the equal sign, and we just added 9 on the left side of the equal sign. If they're equal still, I need to add 4 and add 9 on the other side of the equals as well. So 0 plus 4 plus 9. And this is a very common mistake that people usually forget about. If you add 4 and you add 9 on one side of the equals, I need to do the same thing on the other side of the equals so that they are still equal. So now, here's the point of complete the square. We added 4 because this will now factor. x squared plus 4x plus 4 becomes x plus 2 times x plus 2, or x plus 2 all squared. And y squared minus 6y plus 9 will factor as y minus 3 times y minus 3, so y minus 3 all squared. And then you have a minus 23 equals 13. So now this is looking more and more like standard form. I have x minus a number that's being squared. I have y minus a number that's being squared. But then I have this minus 23 that needs to be moved to the other side of the equal sign. So only the variable terms are on the left. So x squared, or x plus 2 all squared plus y minus 3 all squared plus 23 will give you 36. And so now it's in standard form. You have x plus 2 all to the second, y minus 3 all to the second power, and 36 is a number squared. It's 6 squared. And so now this is standard form. So standard form for equation of a circle. So that finishes up the problem. They were asking us to write the standard form of the equation of a circle, and we did. But what's so important about this form is we can identify the center and the radius. So if they were asking for the center of the circle, we can now find it. So the circle's center would be at negative 2, because I need to subtract negative 2 to get positive 2. So h comma k would be negative 2. And I need, I'm subtracting 3 inside the parentheses with the y, so that's the y coordinate of the center. So negative 2 comma 3 is the center. And what's the radius of the circle? It's 6, because I need to square 6 on the right side of the equation to get 36. So 6 units. So if I had to center at negative 2 comma 3, just like this graph is. So if I have the center at negative 2 comma 3, that's the center. And if I'm a distance of 6 in every single direction, that will give me every single point on the circle. And its equation in general form is x squared plus y squared plus 4x minus 6y. Subtract 23 equals 0. But more importantly, its standard form is x plus 2 all squared plus y minus 3 all squared equals 36 or 6 squared. So these are the same equation, but general form doesn't tell us any information about the center or the, or the radius, but we can convert from general form to standard form using complete the square. 
and the center and the radius can be identified from the, from the standard form much more easily. So this finished up our video on circles and equations of circles. If you have any questions about any of the examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on the homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about exponential functions.